Hello, Marilyn Hall here. Today we're going to get up close and personal about these special blouses. They have a little uh, drawstring bust enhancement features. If you'd like to figure out how these are exactly put together from the inside, I'm going to go into great detail today. I had a viewer who asked me how those are made, so that's what this video is all about today. This one has very thin, kind of like a little cord, I guess, and this one uh, is kind of snug. I'll show you the, the back side. After they put the elastic on, then they folded down this side trim. They have the elastic wrapped around as the last thing that they did in the front. It looks like the seam allowance went to the right and the left, just normal, and they took an extra piece of fabric, two inches wide, and they stitched it right up the middle, creating the casing. The little ties are anchored up here at the center top, and then they come freely through these openings at the bottom. There's three sets of stitching here, one down the middle, one down the middle, and one on either side, that these little cords are traveling through. So let's see how long these are. Coming up from the bottom to the top, it's about a foot. The second blouse, they have a little bit of trim. I didn't make either one of these ones. They have a little bit of trim in the side neckline, uh, finished off on the inside with a piece of just regular fabric, it looks like. And then they have elastic inside of this little casing here. This folds over the whole works in the middle here. The finished piece of, of uh, fabric here is one, two and a quarter inches. And this is part of the blouse front that they stitched it together, folded that seam allowance off to the right. There is a satiny kind of ribbon in this case. So this bodice is seven and a half inches long and the ties go down all the way to about 18 inches, maybe 18 on each side that looks like the, the ribbons are stitched in here. This uh, little piece of uh, facing goes over the finished, um, the finished whole business here. Yeah, so it looks like this facing gets sewn on after you've got the ribbon in place. And then the way it comes out here on the bottom, it looks like they've got a little channel here created after you finish off. Okay, I figured it out. After you stitch the center of the bodice, there's a little extra fabric that turns up that would be part of the casing of the elastic. It looks like that when they created the casing for the elastic, that very same fabric came up and there's this little cute opening here that the ribbon comes out of. So for this one, you pull on the ribbons, which is kind of nice, and it is a little bit on the thick side at the top. You pull on it and then you would tie it into a bow or what have you uh, on the bottom. This whole blouse here is cotton. This one has this ruffle inserted between the facing and the front of the blouse, and it tapers down into the corner the, here. Um, it looks like there's a seam down the middle where that means that the front, there is no elastic at all in the front of this one. So there is, the, the blouse goes over and the seam allowance for the front folds over to create this casing. There's no extra fabric added here. In this case, the elastic along the bottom folds up after you've got this, this casing on. So looking at it really close up, the elastic folds up after the ribbon comes out. And in this case, there's just a little, kind of looks like a ripped hole. I didn't make this blouse with the satin ribbon in it. And I can't tell for sure, but it looks like the satin ribbon might be, let's, let's tug at it once and see if I can figure it. Oh, it looks like it's sewn into the, yeah, the ribbon is sewn into this top stitching, apparently. Yep, I can kind of see it. When I open it here, I can see where the ribbon has been folded down. So they must have come up, folded the ribbon down, and stitched it right in along the top. Okay, this whole this whole um, facing part is, again, a little over an inch after the seam, so it folds over, and then they, they serge the raw edge. The facing for the whole front bodice is kind of tucked underneath. I hope that you can see that clearly. This one is one that I made. This is a satin blouse, and I made a seam up the front, folded seam allowance on either side. I took my sewing machine, and I made what would be like a buttonhole opening here that you'd make for, for buttons. So I sewed at the bottom of this casing, and this finished it off with 
um, my serger and then made a little opening just about big enough um, the tie to go through. I made the tie out of satin. It uh, looks like I serged the raw edge and made the whole thing a little over a quarter inch wide. And that one, when you pull it, it tugs it down. Actually, kind of comes down and goes up at the same time. This is for a more uh, full chested person. So this particular depth of this blouse is eight inches. It's probably a 40, 42 double D bra size. So that's why this is so, so long. Now for a smaller bust, you, you can make it shorter. Now if I were to make this short, there'd be, um, to go underneath the, the bra, there'd be no room here. So this is a very full blouse. And then we have the elastic for the bottom of the blouse that comes up to this and, or I should say the ties end right before the elastic. So I think I sewed it, added these ties, probably pinned these out of the way, turned up the bottom hem and had elastic go all the way through there. That's what it looks like to me. This is a blouse I also made very similar to the last one. This is made from the satin sheets. I did the same thing, a stitch up the middle, folded the seam allowance to either side, serged the raw edges, made a tie, inserted it into the casing, and I used the buttonhole choice in my sewing machine and had it come out there. Folded up the elastic and this was very tiny elastic so it's a pretty small casing and had that so it cleared. On the top here there was no elastic. Let's see. The top of the blouse there was no elastic. It just um, was just plain like this. Hopefully between all those examples you can find something that would pertain to your blouse pattern. Well, now that you figured out how to make one of these, I hope you'll send me some pictures of your finished blouses, your finished dirndls. I love to see pictures of projects that people have done. And if you have any more questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up, and of course, subscribe to my channel.